Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Juri Munki and I'm a maker. I make a lot of 3D models for 3D printing and you can find my models on my mini factory. In this video you can find my Duotone pump adapter for wings and kites. The adapter is not included with the wings and it's not really commonly included with your generic pumps either. Right now the adapter is priced at $3. However, if I manage to monetize my channel, I will make it free. So you can help out and subscribe and like the video and maybe soon the model will be free. Because I have a windsurfing background, I decided to buy the Duotone Slickwing. It has a boom, so it's kind of familiar to me. I was lucky I had the adapter to start with. However, I had a friend who also wanted the Slick and we checked his pump and he didn't have the right adapter. And we also checked a lot of websites and they were all sold out on the adapters. So the only option would have been to buy a new pump. And why would you want to buy a new pump when you have a perfectly good one? And I thought it would be fun to design a working uh, pump adapter. And here it is. Maybe you bought a slick and, well, you thought it would come with the adapter or that your pump would have one. And now you have the wing and you can't pump it up. If you have a 3D printer and you have the materials, it just takes about half an hour to make one of these. The adapter consists of two parts. There's the main part and there's a ceiling ring. The main part of the adapter is best printed using PLA. Use a good brand that you know is strong and that you can print in high quality. You should try to make this part as strong as possible. I tried using PETG, but it was too flexible. So I think most materials other than PLA will be too flexible for them to work. The model I've published already includes supports and you have to remove the supports. This blue part, just snip off the sides here, like that. And then there's some supports in the bottom, like that, in the middle. And then two little bits here on the sides. They come out easily like that. And then optionally you can kind of round out these knobs here on the sides a little bit using the pliers. They'll eventually round out in, in use as well. And that's it. The seal should be printed in a flexible material. I used a really cheap TPU that is not really all that flexible. I recommend printing it entirely hollow and with really thin walls. In my case, I use Simplify 3D and I use five top and bottom layers, which is quite a bit, and then just one wall to keep the walls really, really thin and no infill. We use these adapters from around the middle of last summer and we had really good results with them. The only thing is that when the weather gets cold there's an increased risk of the PLA to actually shatter and you can see it having happened on this one here and it usually breaks around the uh, slot here at the end of the slot. What I've done is I've tried to improve the model there but there's not a whole lot I can do because layer strength is a problem with 3D printers. But what you can do is you can take a soldering iron and you can just heat it up to about 200 Celsius, a little bit under, and you can just swirl it lightly around the end of the slot here so that you bind the layers together in that spot. Hopefully, this latest version is actually gonna last a little bit better. I think having an extra flexible ceiling ring also helps. So part of the problem has been that in cold weather, the ceiling ring becomes more rigid in case the adapter actually breaks when you're using it. It will usually either just leak when you're pumping, so if you notice that there's a hissing sound, you might actually have a cracked adapter. And if you remove it carefully and you inspect it, you might find the crack before it actually breaks completely. 
So I recommend printing an extra adapter so you can just switch when this happens. If the adapter actually breaks, this small part will stay in the valve. And in order to remove that, I recommend that you take a paper clip and you bend the end to make a small L shape. And then you have this tiny little tool for fishing out that extra bit from the valve. There is no damage done to the valve and it's pretty easy as long as, as you have this tool. Well, that's it for this video. However, here's a teaser for the next video. I already have a new project and I've been using it. And it's been on this video the whole time. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the boom here. Those booms are actually, there's one here and one there. They're made of ice hockey sticks that I rescued from garbage bins. They're carbon, they're really light. The uh, boom that is actually on the wing weighs 260 grams. If you would like to see how to make your own carbon boom for pretty much nothing, well, under $10, subscribe and check out my next video. That's all for this time. See you next time. Bye.